Welcome to Transport Vlog, my name is Paul and in this video I'm going to give you an update on the new City Metro station at Crow's Nest and also explain the design and layout of this new station. Crow's Nest is the first new station on the Sydney Metro City and Southwest extension and it's one of two stations within Sydney's Lower North Shore. There are three distinct buildings, one for the entrance exit on Pacific Highway, a smaller building for the Clark Street entrance exit and a separate services building. I'm going to start with the largest and most developed of these three buildings and that's the one for the Pacific Highway entrance exit. The front of this building is on Pacific Highway but it continues into Oxley Street and Clark Lane. The station entrance exit is just below these canopy structures. And here is a closer view of it. This and all other footage was filmed on the 26th of January or the 11th of February 2024 unless mentioned otherwise. On the 26th of January you can see the black vertical supports above the canopies. This is where the future windows will go and they look very similar to the ones at Gadigal Station. And these will bring lots of natural light into this area. Here is a closer look at where the future windows will be along with the canopy structure below. Looking over the fencing reveals a bank of three escalators. These will go to a concourse level below. As you can see these are all finished and being all lit up they look very inviting. These escalators run in a north-south direction so that they align with the concourse and platforms below that also run north to south. The opal gates will be on the concourse level. To the right of the escalators is the lift. You can now see more of the lift shaft along with the lift door. Now for a closer view of the bare wall that will soon be embellished with some artwork. The door on the left leads to a non-public part of the station. Notice the grey cladding that is now appearing on the lower part of the rear wall and that continues behind the escalators. Many of the ceiling tiles have now gone in and they share some similarities with the ones used on the new parts of Central Station and there's a reason for that which I'll reveal a little later. This is the ceiling above the lift shaft and from here you get a good view of the canopy structures as well. The canopies continue north along Pacific Highway and I'll explain what would be under them in a moment. By the 9th of February the majority of the windows had gone in. You could see this worker carefully manoeuvring a window into position along with another new window on the truck. Now there's quite a lot more to this building besides the Pacific Highway entrance exit so let's explore that now. I'll start with this area at the northern end of the building and to help you get your bearings the lift shaft is here. Now I don't know what the purpose of this area will be but there is something happening on the walls that makes me wonder if this will be some kind of public space. Now on the corner with Oxley Street and below these canopy structures will be a number of retail outlets and these continue to the station entrance. Let's take a closer look at this one on the corner. The two diagonal supports are part of the overall building design but other than that there isn't much else to see. Here is a closer look at the retail canopy structures and now the retail unit closest to this station entrance. This building has a very distinctive brick finish that was inspired by the Federation period buildings that are common in the Crow's Nest area. The bricks were embedded into precast concrete segments and this speeded up construction and allowed much of the work to be done off site. The vertical columns have a traditional brick finish at the bottom and then further up some of the bricks stick out to create this pattern effect and that continues above the station entrance exit as well. The columns around the retail areas have the same brick cladding with the rest of this wall being slightly darker and featuring these squares that protrude out. And this design continues on the upper part of the wall on Oxley Street with a standard brick finish on the lower wall. And it's the same design on the Clark Lane side too and that's where I'm heading now. Peering over the hoardings close to the Oxley Street corner reveals what looks like one of the equipment rooms. And here's another one towards the south end of this building. There is still lots of scaffolding in place as you can see here and the brick finish is only visible closer to the Oxley Street end. And there is also scaffolding on the southern side too. This area here is on top of the station box so the concourse and platforms are directly below. In the future there will be commercial offices on this land that will form part of a 21 storey commercial office development with most of it being on top of the station building. On the other side of Clark Lane is the St Leonard Centre which is a brutalist style commercial development that opened in 1972. I believe its heritage is listed which is probably why it's still here. So I'm now on Clark Street and behind me is the second new entrance to Crow's Nest Station. And here it is on the map. It's much smaller occupying just a small part of Clark Street and continuing on to Hume Street and Clark Lane. The station entrance is just here on Clark Street. 
it's integrated into a new commercial office development that is being built above, and I'll come back to this in a moment. This canopy structure marks where this entrance exit on Clark Street will be, and just above it are the vertical supports for the future windows. Now peering over the fence, and you can see that this entrance exit has two lifts and to the right of them is a bank of two escalators with the crow's nest sign above them. And then on the wall on the right is some public art. Now this may not yet be complete, so I'm not going to try and explain what it might represent. To the left of the two lifts are some stairs, which will lead to a retail area. And this will probably be where you'll go to get your morning coffee. This entrance exit has similar design features to the one on Pacific Highway, including brick cladded columns and grey cladding along the escalator wall. And the ceiling looks similar too, and appears to be more or less complete. Now on Hume Street, and you can see the southern side of the Pacific Highway station building on the left, and now this side of the Clark Street building. And looking through the fencing, there isn't much to see as yet. I reckon the commercial development entrance will be on this section of Hume Street, and this may be what this part of the building will become. The removal of the scaffolding started in late January, and by the 11th of February, the upper levels of this commercial development were visible. With floor to ceiling windows, I reckon the views from here will be pretty special. But maybe not from the north side, although these boards look temporary, so perhaps there will be some windows behind them. Now viewing from Pacific Highway, and it looks like some station equipment rooms might occupy the first two levels. And most of the rest of this side is covered in scaffolding, so not much to see. Before I show you the services building, I'm going to give you a virtual tour of the bits that you can't see from the street, so here goes. This Crow's Nest station diagram is from the Woods Bagot website, which I'll link to above and in the description below. Woods Bagot are the principal architects for this station, and they also designed the new parts of Central Station as well, including the iconic Northern Concourse feature roof. The Clark Street entrance is here, and these are the escalators and lifts that lead to the concourse level, and this is where the Opal Gates will be. Now for an artist impression image of the concourse level, with the Clark Street opal gates and escalators on the right. The two lifts are also on the right, and you can see a little part of the lift shaft here. This is the back of the windows for the Pacific Highway entrance, and these are the escalators and lift that you saw earlier. And this is the bottom of the Pacific Highway escalators, with the lift on the left. The northern bank of escalators, to the platforms below, are to the right of the Pacific Highway escalators. And this Sydney Metro photo shows how the escalators to the platforms looked in January 2024, with what looked like anodised aluminium panels on the three walls. The double lift shaft for the two platform lifts is clearly visible within the concourse, and here is how it looks for real. And notice how the embedded brick concrete walls from the Pacific Highway entrance continue down into the concourse. There is a southern bank of two escalators as well, and these are just here. So similar to Waterloo and Barangaroo, the lifts are in the middle, with banks of escalators on either side. The main difference here is that both lifts are contained within a double lift shaft. Here are some Sydney Metro photos of the Ireland platform, which all looks finished. Notice the similar style of ceiling panels as used at Central Station, again this is probably because they were designed by the same architect. And above the platform screen doors are what look like further anodised aluminium panels, but this time in a bronze colour, which reminds me of Waterloo Station. So that gave you a pretty good insight of what lies below, now back at street level for a look at the services building. It's most visible from the Pacific Highway, and is immediately to the south of the junction with Hume Street, and it runs along this part of Clark Lane as well. It's also on this small section of Hume Street, which has been temporarily closed for the last couple of years, to allow the station construction to take place. From Pacific Highway, most of this building was covered in scaffolding when viewed on the 11th of February. And interestingly, back in September 2023, the Hume Street side was more visible, and looked like this. On closer inspection, you can see ventilation grills and some of the now familiar brick columns through the scaffolding. And then further south, a gap in the scaffolding reveals a small part of the finished building. A 17-storey residential development will be constructed on top of this services building, and I'm guessing that its entrance will be somewhere on the Pacific Highway. Now looking from Hume Street, and the area to the right of this services building is the section of this road that is currently closed. This is on Clark Lane, and through this large gap, you can see part of the inside of this building, although it's just the structural components at the moment. On either side of these stairs are more brick cladded concrete supports, and towards the southern end the embedded brick concrete walls are more visible. Here is a look into one of the other rooms. 
This one is also very large and it will be interesting to see what this is used for. Now looking back along Clark Lane, and the bricks within the building on the right look almost identical to the precast embedded brick concrete walls of the services building, so perhaps this building was one of the ones that inspired this brick design. So that's my update and overview of the design and layout of Crow's Nest Station. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, consider supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.